So the controversy surrounding this chapter is the ending. A lot of people are right now going mental yet again because Erza was able to stop Grey and Natsu, which Grey was already in his Devil Slayer magic mode, and Natsu was close to getting into the END form. He already kind of unlocked it, and Erza was able to stop them on some Kakashi stopping Little Naruto and Little Sasuke back in the day type of moment. And you guys know... I, I hold no bars. When something is shit, something bullshit, I'm going to call it out. But I honestly got to say that I think people are taking this one a bit too far with the whole airs and stuff. And here's why. For starters, Natsu is seemingly nowhere near complete being END. If you look throughout the fight, you see that he's slowly transforming. And if you've seen the promotional poster, which, yeah, the movie can't be completely considered anything other than, hey, it's a movie. But it looks as though END form will be something to do with him growing a wing and maybe having a more demonic look. So you can assume. E&D hadn't completely been revived yet because Natsu was even still himself, you know, yelling out Grey and stuff like that. He wasn't completely in that E&D like I'm not Natsu anymore. So I think Natsu himself wasn't completely E&D yet. And then the Devil Slayer magic that Grey has, I don't think that completely consumed him either because he was still saying, you know, like rational things in a way, but they were both kind of just being idiots. And if you even look at the panel and you look at Erza's arms and hands, on one hand, she's all burnt the hell up. On the other hand, it looks like it it cracked her hand or it iced her hand or something like that so she did take some damage from that but you got to remember neither one of them were complete especially Natsu he wasn't completely END form so it's not like they were 100% at their max and Erza was able to stop them not to mention regardless of what Erza is a pretty formidable opponent so like for her to stop a couple of fists is not a big deal it's not like she completely knocked them out like they were little children and again you guys know when there's bullshit in fairy tale I'm, I'm calling it out but I think that this one in particular was not not that big of a deal. Yeah, you can argue that why the fuck is Erza getting involved in this shit? I mean, I get it because of the guild and stuff like that, but people wanted to see these two throw down and Erza jumping in the way. I guess because people have a sour taste in their mouth towards Erza, they're kind of like that, but honestly, it was kind of logical in this one. It was just like she stopped their hands. That, that was pretty much it, and they weren't complete. Beginning of the chapter, finding out that Mavis, which I think it was already stated, I'm not sure, but Mavis was the one that gave Makarov his name, and kind of, it really did feel emotional, but at the same time with Fairy Tale, because of everything that's been going on, especially in this arc, it's hard to 100% engage myself emotionally to the scene because of everything that we know thus far. So far, it still seems like it's good shit. So far, it still seems like Makarov, you know, really went out with a bang and all that good stuff. So yeah, I was able to summon what feeling in this chapter because again it still feels as though mock rob's dead but he is still standing there in that statue form so who knows if some bs magic could revive him and that's kind of how i felt while reading this chapter it's like i feel sad but i don't want to be betrayed again so i'm kind of just like with my guard up like he might come back bro he might also i think that this gives great way for erza and eileen to finally go at it because eileen is pretty much responsible for mock rob's stuff and erza's already sad as shit over it so i think that'd be the best reason for them two to square off and of course the fact that they're in war, let's not forget about that. I did feel as though Loxus was really trying to be strong in this chapter because like if you've seen in past arcs, he really does care about Makarov. He cared so much, you know, he really loved him and stuff like that. So the fact that he was keeping a smile on his face and everything, I think he was just being strong because right now you need that. Everybody is torn up about this, you know, they love Makarov. So I could tell that behind closed doors, Loxus is probably going to break down. And he was even warming up Mabus. So you definitely see the development in Loxus as a character as well, him saying, you know, we still need a strategy, you know, let's just keep going and stuff like that. So you can see some development in Loxus. That was good right there. Eileen threw out some numbers there. 70 to 80% of their forces are down, which I guess it showcases that we won't have much more of fodder battles. But in reality, that 70 to 80% of nothing because they were all nothing. They didn't do jack shit. And the remaining Spriggan are still alive. So we didn't have no casualties with the Spriggans either. And it looks as though the Natsu versus Grey fight is over because of Erza with the tears. And then when she tells them... Maybe they'll get it together, but I still don't think that's the end of END. I think Natsu's not going to be able to control, ultimately, this transformation, especially if anything further. Like, once he finds out about Mock Rob's death, I think that's going to be it. He's going to go off on his own, and we're going to see the true revival of END. With all that being said, honestly, I got to say that this was a good to a very good chapter. Seven to eight, maybe seven and a half, maybe even the eight, because, honestly, what it did accomplish, first of all, it showcased the aftermath of Mock Rob's death. It showcased that Natsu and Grey, really, in reality, why the fuck are they fighting like they really don't need to be fighting and the whole thing with Erza it really wasn't nonsensical it really had some logic behind it it wasn't all complete BS I mean don't get me wrong Erza left with a bad taste in her mouth but 
they weren't complete and all she did was grab their fists. But let me know what you thought of the chapter. How did you feel about that ending with Erza stopping them? What do you think about Makarov's death? Once again, do you truly believe that he's gone for good or in three to five chapters he'll return? And do you think that this is perfect setup for Erza to go against Eileen seeing as how she's pretty much responsible for the death of Makarov? And you're with thoughts of the chapter. But thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you want more from me, make sure to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and stalk my Facebook to get more when the video ends on Fennel World. And as always, people, have an awesome day.